Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Pocket. Joined by my co-host, John. What is going on tonight, John? Oh, nothing. I'm still uh, beautiful outside, right? And, uh, man, I know this isn't a football show, but wow, last night. Yeah. What a, <laughs> what a way. That was like a Maple Leaf. That was a very Maple Leaf thing to have happened with <laughs> Rodgers. Like I, I remember Doug Gilmore that happened to him. Same thing. The Leafs got him back, and he must not have played but a period before he he ended his career right there pretty much. Oh, then he ended up going to the Canadians, but yeah. Yeah. That was sad. That was kind of sad a little bit. Yeah, it was. I, I don't know. You know, it's just, uh, I know this is a hockey show, but I mean, that was kind of a, uh, you know, well, you know, you had a lot of guys that came there for Aaron Rodgers, you know, Lazar. I mean, and now just, uh, what do those guys do now? I, I well, Oh God! If you Crazy. drafted Garrett Wilson in in fantasy, you got to be really kind of you know what I mean. That's a tough yeah. blow. Yeah. So, all so, right. Yeah. So we're ne- we're inching closer and closer to the season, John. Um, I know camps are going to start opening here uh, very soon. Um, and hey, uh, we've got a few more what? A few more weeks, and uh, we'll be having preseason hockey. Um, yeah. Always, yeah. uh, always a good time, um, you know, just to kind of get in the swing of things, and you know, uh, you know that regular season's coming. We're, we're, well, really, we're, uh, we're a month away from the regular season at this point. Actually, less than a month away from the yeah. regular season. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll be in the swing of things here uh, very soon. Um, I was just looking at when they actually camps open here i'm just trying to look and see i know rookie camps i think for the most part are uh going on right now so yeah but um yeah so just just looking at the start of nhl training camps usually it's like mid uh yeah september 21st to the 25th uh is when most of the camps open they said uh yeah, most camps are opening on the 21st, so it's very soon, very soon. That, that'd that be next Thursday, technically. Wow, yeah, and I so. think the Leafs, looking at the Leafs preseason schedules earlier, I think their first game's like the 24th yeah, or something. So that's, yeah. oh, I can't wait. That, that goes so quick, and then, you know, we're yeah. into the season, which is going to be, uh, I, I can't wait. Every year, it's the same feeling every year, you know. I mean, yeah. I... I I, it just it, it, the funny thing is the off season for me seems to last forever and it and it really doesn't when you think how quick it is from the end of that yeah. you know Stanley Cup final to this right. it's not been long but it God it, it, the summer drags yeah no it feels like it's forever especially uh, you know when that last uh, you know when that team raises the cup it just seems like it's forever uh, you know you're uh, until you get hockey again but uh, but yeah. Um, some news. Uh, how about Tatar uh, signing a one-year deal with the Avalanche? Um, you know, he was with the Devils last year. Uh, did pretty good with the Devils last year. I mean, he had uh, 48 points, 20 goals, 28 assists. Um, was a plus uh, Was a plus 41. And he played all 82 regular season games last year for the Devils. Uh, and he had that one goal in the uh, – in the, in the, in the um in the cup in their in the playoffs yeah but um what do you think about that i was a little bit uh not shocked but uh i was i thought he was gonna sign i i i didn't think it was gonna take long this long to sign him to be honest with you it took a while yeah um nice for the colorado right because they're 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 gonna be trying to make up landis gog and i like them i mean you've had them on your third line I, i think it's a good one i i you know, 1.5 million, I think it was all. And, um, you, I mean, he's good for 20 at least. I mean, I, I think it was a, it's a, it, it was smart by Colorado. They need it. And I think, um, I was, I, you know, I was, I didn't think, I didn't know where he would go. To tell you the truth, I didn't even have a thought. Like, where's, where could he end up? And then you just think of the good teams. I don't know. Could I have saw him with your Penguins? Yes. It wouldn't yeah. have surprised me if he would have ended up there. Well, you know, he was in uh, Josh Yoey, one of the guys that uh, one of the beat writers for the Penguins had talked uh, that he was a he was a potential, uh, you know, he was he was potentially uh, somebody that they were going to sign. Um, I could have seen. Kinda... 
yeah, that kind of fell through. Uh, you didn't hear much about it after that, but uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I think you know he did pretty good with the uh, with the Devils last year. Um, but uh, I remember he, you know, he was selected going back. I think what was he two thousand nine? I think he was was his draft wow. year yeah. selected by uh, by Detroit. the uh, Detroit, yeah, by the Red Wings. Yep, second round. Uh, I think they took him. But uh, yeah, I mean. Um, I don't know. Good signing for them. Like you said, they're going to need, uh, we know Delana Sog's not 100% yet. And, and when, when is he going to be back to, are they talking last I had heard it's, 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 uh, they said he could miss up to, I think they said two months of the, of the regular season to start off. If they're lucky, they'll just keep him out. You know, if he can be healthy and, but keep him out to the playoff start, boy, what a, yeah. what a, uh, you know, that's the Kucherov effect and that would be huge. Right. You know, I, I would hope, I would think they might be pushing that way. I mean, why wouldn't you? I, and he probably needs a lot of time. Um, boy, I think they're going to be good this year all because of that in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. because he'll be, he will be back. And I don't know. I, I don't you, think he'll, I think he'll be, he'll be just in time for the playoffs. You know, it was an interesting stat on him. You know, he's a, uh, he's, he's, he's one of the only ones in, uh, in the devil's history to have to score at least 20 goals and have a rating of at least plus 40. Uh, the last one to do that was Patrick Elias in, uh, that had, was a plus was, uh, had 40 goals and a plus 45 in 2000 oh. in 2001. So, wow. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good company. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was a factor for the devils last year for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's I don't a quality, know. Quality signing in September. My gosh. Yeah. You know? you know, I tell you what, the GM uh, of the a- Avalanche, uh, McFarland, I, he's he's done some good things. He the guy has done some, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, they, they've picked up some veterans. They've done, uh, you know, I mean, Tatar's definitely going to give them scoring depth, no doubt about it. Uh, and uh, he's one of those guys, I think, John, and I think you would agree just by his stats. He's one of these guys that contributes on both ends of the ice, you know. Yes. And um, you know, they got him for one year. They didn't pay a lot. What was the? Because I was reading on NHL.com, they said the financial terms were not disclosed. That did did you, did you have that? Is it like one point five or? I had heard it was one point five. Like I think okay. Jim. I think Jim Berenger reported one point five. Um, I'm pretty Jim, sure. Jim got the inside scoop. He, yeah. he's, he's got yeah. the inside scoop. So. Yeah, I think yeah. our guy Jim had it at one. I believe he had it one point five. Man, I, I swear I could have. That had to be where I, I read it from. He's the guy okay. to get your your news from, and he. Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, one point five, which is great. I mean, it's a great. It's a. I mean, that if you just if if someone would have, you know, on July first, if Tatar would have went somewhere, I would have thought, okay, good. You know, yeah. I, I kept looking, I because I know like the Leafs need the Leafs. There's one spot, and it's like third line wing, and I thought to myself, well. You know, they got Nick Robertson, but they never know with him because, sadly, you know, he's, he hasn't lived up to his brother's potential, but only because of, I don't know if it's just injuries or what. Well, a lot of injuries for Nick. But, um, you know, but then I, you know, he's, he had to go. I really thought, I don't know why, Pittsburgh, I felt like he was going to stay in that division. Like, I don't know what yeah. it was about. I felt like I could have saw him with Carolina, Pittsburgh. I don't know what, Rangers. Um, but Colorado, smart. I it's going to help. I mean, he is come in, second line, second unit power play. I'm sure. Um, like you said, he plays at both ends of the ice. Yeah. So responsible. Yep. But it's a good one. Yeah. No, good pickup for them. Like I said, it's, uh, he's going to be, he's going to fill in for that role while Landis Gog's out for sure. So, um, like I said, you know, uh, good, uh, like I said, uh, good, uh, you know, McFarland uh, comes through again for them. But, uh, you know, like I said, he's uh, he's done a hell of a job so far thus far, I think. But, uh, yeah. Um, another guy that we had saw signed, uh, uh, Ottawa, signed Ottawa signed Sanderson. Um, I hadn't seen any details on that. Do you know any any of the particulars on that, John? I believe, it's eight, I believe it's eight years, eight million a year. Okay. Yeah. AAV, I'm pretty sure it's a it's one of those like you know doing the old Buffalo thing you know and Ottawa does it too where if we got a young guy that we like even if they only had 40 points we're gonna lock them up for the eight years because what if right. you know type of 
I, I hate it because that's the cap winning again. When you think about it, okay. The, I mean, really, you're paying eight million a year for for a breakout pass right now. And he's yeah. good at that, but not he's not worth eight. It, to me, not worth eight. It'd be like it's like the guy in um. Why am I going to forget his name? Darn it, in Edmonton who just signed a bridge deal. The defenseman Boucher. No, oh, no Boucher. Bouchard. Oh, Bouchard. Yeah, yeah. You know, he kind yep. of similar. Now Bouchard signed that two year three point nine million uh, AAV. Instead, and I'm sure this is the difference between Edmonton and Ottawa. Ottawa said, "Well, we'll just lock them up eight years, eight right. million. But I think that's what Bouchard would be. But obviously, Edmonton can't do that with their restraints and and uh, cap. You know, right? Um, so, I mean, Sanders he could be great. I mean, the Sabers are doing this all over the ice. I mean, that's what they do: lock mm-hmm. them up to six. And that could be, you know, it actually it is smart. I guess if you mm-hmm. the Leafs did it with Nylander, it was smart yeah. when they right. did it. So yeah. Yeah, but it's the cap, and I and I I got to tell you, it's got to get fixed, Bill. Some way, it even, does. Just, even if it's not just raising it, is going to fix it. There needs to be more nuances to it. I feel like there needs to be, mm-hmm. like I like I like the NBA cap is very hard to understand, but I understand one thing: you get that one player that is yours, pretty much. Yeah, and you develop them; they're yours. I don't think of the bird rights or whatever it is. Yeah. And so if it's in Toronto, it's Austin Matthews, it's Marner, it's Neyland, you get to say, okay, these guys don't even count to the cap. Right. Something's got to give because you get punished for developing players, I feel. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would agree with that, yeah. You do, so, really. I mean, it's, um, you know, yeah. And it, <laughs> cap always wins, like we always say. The cap always wins, you know. Yeah, and I, I uh, just don't know how they could. I mean, in the beginning, remember when the lockout? The lockout was terrible, and 05 comes, and then yeah. here we are. We start, and teams like Buffalo and Ottawa were in a better position because I remember Pittsburgh probably had to do this. I'm sure Toronto had to shed so much; they, they had to get down to like 35 mil or something right. crazy, whatever the cap was. And um, I. It never re- it's never changed. Like I, I would have thought by now we'd have had some kind of it wouldn't just be such a hard cap. I mean, I know it's not, you can mess around with all LTIR and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have LTIR, really it's pretty hard, except that 10% maybe in the off season type thing. Right. Yep. And man, they've put some of the teams that like Edmonton, Toronto, Pittsburgh will be one of them. You you definitely gotta throw in those guys. And uh, Rangers and some, I just think it's it's now gone beyond the handcuff. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's, yep. I mean, teams like Buffalo and Ottawa, really, um, it, it, it's aggravating to me that they would sign guys like Ben Bishop. Like when yeah. the Sabers had Ben Bishop for six million a year, and we, you know, they just yeah. signed him last year. Right. So that's. That's bullshit. That's not good to yeah. go to the cap floor. Yeah. Ben Bishop, I remember him in St. Louis. Uh, they just – they had a love affair with him in, in St. Louis. It was like a uh, – I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I know. But uh, speaking of Ottawa, how about Holden uh, hanging it up? Uh, he's accepting, I guess, a developmental role with them. I don't yeah. know if you saw that. I did – yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean – I. I got to say, man, Ottawa, I, I'm still, I, we say this every time Ottawa's name comes up and I can't get it out of my mind that they're worth a billion dollars. I know. And when they're, <laughs> I mean, that's just, I guess that I'm going to go right back at my cap uh, bitching again because they're worth a billion dollars. So that means, <laughs> you know, yeah. they probably don't need to be at the cap floor anymore. Right. <laughs> so what are the Sabres worth? It's got to be the same. I mean, yeah. Well, I yeah, I mean you're in uh I don't know, you're in Canada's uh capital, you know, so um but uh you know I tell you what, that franchise is well, I mean they, they obviously revamped it in the early nineties, but I mean before that that was a very old franchise. I mean that was uh you know, had been in the you know, a staple in the NHL since the uh really its inception. So but um uh, but, yeah, because uh, they were yeah. they were gone for so long. I mean, yeah. um, I, I, yeah. I mean, but think about it. talk about an expansion team when they came in. They weren't giving, They weren't the knights. I mean, they weren't the. Remember, they had like twenty wins. That was bad. Yeah. I mean, that was that was your normal expansion. 
Um, Back in the Laleem days with the uh, Marvin the Martian uh, goalie mask. <laughs> yeah, those yeah. days. We got a Tommy Barrasso even played for them for a little while. I mean, remember. yes. Oh, we got a question here. Where is Patrick Kane gonna go? I think Detroit. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I mean, I've heard Detroit over and over again. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Uh, um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I think that would be a good fit for him. But uh, you know, I know he kind of. Uh, well, we talked about this that he kind of was uh, not. He basically, you know, I mean, he's he basically not basically he did basically say a farewell to uh um well he hinted retirement right am i am i yeah yeah he did yeah i don't even know if i'd want you know i gotta say i'm curious if i if you get him you can't count i don't know if you're counting on him like you used to the the man at the time in new york didn't go well right the little time there i i I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm the – look, it, you're talking an older, injured Kane. He always was small, but he played through it. He played kind of big. Right. Um, he wasn't hitting guys, but you know what I mean. Right. I just, I just wonder if I'd even want him on my – if I'd even – where would you – I mean, a team like Detroit, I don't even know. I mean, I've only heard that because there's connections with the Red right. Wings. There's, it's been all over. I don't know if you've seen it, but if you go on Twitter and different places are, are throwing that out there as a rumor. Yeah. Buffalo is always a rumor. Just well, yeah. Stronger. Yeah. Well, but. the main rumor is Detroit. I mean, we're, we're yeah. hearing that. Uh, but um, I, I would say there's some pros and cons for Detroit. I think the first con that you can say is the guy's just not going to be the same. You know, um, you know, yeah, he's just not going to be the same, you know, um, you know, uh, He's what thirty four, you know. Right. He had he had that hip surgery, right? Yep. You know he, uh, you know, he hasn't uh, he hasn't been the guy. Uh, he hasn't, you know. Yeah, I can't. Um, I would be very. Heavy. The, the other what? pro, or go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go I, ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say one pro I could say is he's going to be low risk and in, in a high, in a, for you know potentially low risk and maybe high reward. I mean, um. You know, are you expecting Detroit to hoist the cup next season? No, I'm not, no. you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I, Iserman, Iserman, I couldn't uh, – I could see him trying to, to bring him in, you know. I, um, yeah, I, I mean, like, could you – could I envision him playing for Tampa? Sure. Maybe Tampa tries to – do. I mean, then, see, though, Tampa probably wouldn't even go there. I just saw Tampa got um, – who'd they bring in? Mott. From yeah. uh, the Canucks, which I, you know, that's, yeah, that, I, I gotta say, no, something. no, go ahead, no, 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 no go ahead. I no, cut I mean, you just off the last going to Tampa is just so perfect for that team. They always, they, they very smartly always are able to retool that bottom six, yeah. like in this way. I like Tyler Mott. I like him a lot. I think he's he fits perfectly, and you're gonna get him for eight hundred thousand probably. Right. So. You know, so you bring him in with Glenn Denning and gosh, I'm forgetting the other one, but they brought another guy in to fill in for Perry and, and Malone yeah. and all that. Ah, mm. man. But, but Kane, could Kane be, could you see him in Florida? I, I feel like he should and would go to a team that has a chance to win. Yeah. The top, right? So well, are the Kings. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Another thing, uh, you know, he didn't, he, he played with the Brinkett for a while, right? At the end of the 20. 20- 21 22 yeah. season so uh and i remember him saying how much he, he they, they kind of yeah. developed the chemistry so th- that's another thing that could that could uh you know possibly uh you know get him to uh detroit um what's he but, going uh, he's got a, and he's got to go there at like a mil a million i mean he's not making he's not gonna you're not paying that guy right one point more than tom even at this point more than thomas tatar right i wouldn't think yeah. So, but I don't know. I mean, is that the whole? I mean, you know, Yarzerman has kind of been uh, a guy that stayed the course. I mean, he's kind of been the guy that uh, the kind of the general manager that, uh, you know, how do I want to say? I guess he's not 
he's trying to build a team that's going to have sustained success. Like it doesn't seem like he's a guy that wants to do not that, well shortcuts maybe I guess is a way in a, I, I don't know, but uh, you know, they've waited, they've waited. Um, what have they done? They've carefully calculated their trades. They've accumulated their draft picks. Uh, you know, they've got prospects in Detroit, no doubt about it. Um, but, but uh Bill, I gotta tell you, man, I gotta give Kevin Adams in Buffalo. He's I, I didn't know what to expect of him as general manager, you know. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, he's done the same thing. Yeah. They yeah, have no, sat yeah. there and just done I mean, I'll give them credit. They yeah. they've got they, you want to talk about prospects. My God. They if they want to make a deal for something, they got the players to do it. You know, if they really wanted to make a some sort of a splash. I think someone would do that. Yeah. Um, there, they are a, if they had a legitimate goalie, I will tell you, I would have probably thrown them in my, in my definite playoff spot. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I have a hard time with that goaltending to think yeah. that they're going to buck the trend that usually says, I mean, that, it doesn't usually happen that rookie goal, you know, I'm trying right. to, there was a couple times I looked it up. I just, off the top of my head, I'm not going to remember because I can't remember stuff anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> There's a couple times, though, where it did work. But yeah. in all the years, it usually it usually you know, doesn't. No, yeah. it's hard when you got a kid like that um, yeah. That that's that's going to have to take the reins and, and on a team that's so young in front of him, too. So Right. Yeah. Um, Matthew Tuchuk says he's ready. He's going to be a full participant uh when the Panthers kick off their training camp September 21st, you know, he had that fractured sternum uh, in the yeah. first period of what was a game three of the. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Game three. Yeah. So, you know, short summer for him, but he said he's feeling great. So, uh, you know, uh, we, I didn't think that he was going to, I didn't, I didn't think he was going to be, uh, I didn't think we'd see him till like October, November, but uh, apparently he's, uh, Apparently he's ready to go. He said he's he's going to be a full participant uh, when they start uh, training camp. So if he's a full that that's what I mean about the East. I mean when we did our we did our little thing to see who would make the play you know, about playoffs and stuff. It's going to be hard to envision. You know you would assume Toronto and Tampa are in. And I'm talking like out of the Atlantic. Um, Toronto and Tampa are in, and. Florida and Boston aren't going to fall away. Right. I, I can't. Boston's not falling off the face. I mean, no. They're going to be good. No, they are. Yeah. So that leaves you with one of them being the third seed and one of them being a wild card. You know what I mean? So it's going yeah. to be tough for one of these other teams to break through, I think. Right. Well, but, I mean, we'll see what, what happens there. But, uh, yeah. you know, he's – yeah, he's primed and ready to go. Um, That's good. I, I love him, man. I wish he was on my team. What a player! <laughs> yeah. 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 Any any other uh, news that I'm missing? I um we have, it's been kind of kind of been kind of quiet. I mean, this is yeah. kind of the uh, the norm for right before training camp is you kind of you kind of have have a uh, you're either going to have nothing or you're going to have like a big splash last minute signing or something like that that's going to come down the wire and i mean there's some guys out there but there's not really anything that's that's you know too um that i think would be a a, a you know a uh, yeah. world changing signing or anything like that i think it's kind of i think at this stage uh we're kind of like uh you know we're, we're so close right now to uh like i said most most camps are kicking off on the on the twenty first, you literally have what? Uh, you literally have what? Ten days? Ten days? Oh. Yeah, I'm trying well, to do I'm math here. <laughs> Today's the twelfth. That's right. I mean, you know. Yeah. And also, you got to start seeing the PTOs soon. More of them, yeah. I'm sure. Will I saw the Leafs? Can't remember the name, Gregor or some guy from I, from San Jose, which he fits yeah. the bill. He's a big guy. He can hit. He does all that. Um, so, you know, you guys start, those PTOs are always – I love seeing when those come around because sometimes right. the names are always shocking, you know, who's on the PTO list. But, um, yeah, it's the calm before the storm, I guess. I I'm, I, I cannot wait 
for real hockey to be, you know, for it just to to get going. There's some stuff going up going on up here in Buffalo. I don't know if you're, yeah, I don't know if your Penguins are here. They might be with the well, Devils. Well, they're doing the, they're yeah, I think the they're doing the rookie thing? camp. Yeah, then there's some, there's like a handful of teams up there in Buffalo doing their rookie. Uh, I, I believe the Penguins are one of them. So, gosh, if um, I had time, I would love. That's a, I don't know if you've been, you've been up here, right? For oh yeah, yeah, and you've been there. You've seen that's a nice uh, man. If you could, I don't know if you remember what it was like here before. I don't know if you'd ever been here when it was Memorial Auditorium way back when. And then they. I mean, I've been up around that way. I've never, you know, but I've, I, I, yeah, I've never been to Memorial Auditorium. No, I can't well, say Well, because that then it becomes what it is now. But that building of, I can't remember the name of the damn thing, but it's beautiful what they built. Of, this is where the whole yeah. thing is going to take place and that whole complex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. And if you have time and you're somebody who lives in this area, boy, that'd be a lot of fun to just go yeah. sit there and watch those cross. I mean, they're basically playing round robin tournaments. Yeah. So well, we have a time. <laughs> we have a minor league hockey team that's actually kicking off uh, this Friday. Um, uh, the uh, the Toma, I forget what they're called, Woodsmen or something mm-hmm. like that. But they're they're kicking off their uh, their first uh, season up here. So. I might actually go check it out. Um, they they what, play uh, they play Friday night. I have no idea, to be honest with you. I just yeah. literally I was listening to the local ESPN up mm-hmm. here, and uh, I just literally heard it uh, today that they're have their inaugural oh. season and the their first games on Friday. So you guys deserve you guys up in Wisconsin really do deserve a team. There's no <laughs> doubt. My, we yeah. talked about this before. There's no, yep. I would take Arizona and throw them right into Milwaukee or something. <laughs> yeah, no, it would, yeah, work. It, it would work. It would work. So, all right. I want to switch gears here. What okay. the hell is going on here with Mike Babcock? <laughs> allegedly, and we're hearing this, uh, this thing. Uh, he was allegedly asking various blue jackets players, to see their f- phones and then air playing their photos on his office TV. Is this some kind of, uh, no. is this some kind of like um, joke or, or is this, is this, is well, there anything you, that you watch the spit and chicklets thing, right? Did you see yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you see Bizonette, you see Ryan Whitney. I didn't see Commodore there. I know Commodore hates Babcock yeah. um, from his days with the Red Wings, but okay. Right. Now, Bizonets, you heard. I mean, I, I wish I'd have had the video. You, you, I should have downloaded it. He, but you can see it if you go to Twitter. You can see it. He's yep. telling you that he brought Boone Jenner in and told Boone Jenner, "Let me see your phone. I want to see what type of a man you are. Let me see the pictures on your phone. Let me see what type of man you are." So, okay. And now those guys are laughing, you know, because it's unbelievable. It's, you you got to yeah. laugh at that. It's unreal. Yeah. Um. Now. It got so bad and big that the Blue Jackets, Boone Jenner, and Johnny Goudreau have now made had to put out statements saying that the spitting chiclet guys have have blown this out of proportion. It's not true. Yeah. It's not what happened. Boone Jenner says all we were doing was looking at family photos. We were both. It was not nothing like that. So you've got them in full denial. I would say this. There's there's two angles of this that I don't understand. One. I can't believe Babcock can't be that foolish as to come in and be like that wild after what happened in Toronto, which ran him out of the league. Right. Yeah. Well, that's my point. I would, we talked about that earlier in the show that would basically commit, you'd be, he'd be committing career suicide doing that. And it's just not, uh, I think this is a fabrication to be honest with you. I think they kind of took a story that was a non-story and kind of like switched it because they know that there's a lot of like, uh, well, basically Babcock's under a microscope with some of the things that came out. And let's face it, some of those things that come out, you know, come out a year after his uh, yeah. being let go. And, um, you know, there was some things that you were like, wow. I mean, we all know he's a whack job. I don't think he's that big of a whack job though to, to make that kind of a, a mistake. Yeah. I think it's kind of something that they're trying well, to fabricate and bril- blow out of proportion when it's really a non-story. Well, like with in Toronto with Mitch Marner, what did he do? He brought Marner in and made him tell him who he thought wasn't basically trying, right. and and point them out in front of the team. So it caused you know the Leafs, to their credit, I guess, kept quiet about this. I you didn't hear about this till after he was well after he was gone. Right. But I, my, you know where else there's career, career suicide here is Bizonette. 
For yeah. him to go on there and lie, and now he said he got a phone call from a player. If he's fabricating and making this up, he, yes. I, my opinion is this, and knowing what we do on podcasts, I do it with my other political one. Look, at, I've been I've been involved in some defamation stuff. And I'll tell you this, if you're going to be involved in that kind of stuff, you better be telling the truth. Because if you're not, that's like some big, you, that's big trouble. That's that's a lot of aggravation and a ton of money you might have to spend when you get sued. Yeah. And what I'm saying is Bizonet's got to be careful. He's on mainstream media. Like he's on TNT. Yeah. They right. could just cut the cord if they say, I know. you mean to tell me you're, that's what, my, that was the only thing about this. That really caught my attention is I can't believe Bizonette is going to straight out lie yeah. about this situation. But then when you, like you say, when you look at it, how could Babcock do this? Yeah. It, I. It can't be. Yeah. So, now Bizonette does say, I don't know if you remember when you listen to his, to the, to the clip, he says, I hope we're telling the truth on this. And I, I couldn't believe well, he said that. And I saw that. I and I, I was just gonna I was gonna add to that. I actually was gonna bring that up. That to me tells me that th he doesn't have a fully credible source. He only has, you know, and and that is not what you want to I mean, it's one thing to like I mean, something like that is not something you want to joke around with. I mean, it'd be one thing to say, hey, he uh you know he did a uh, Herb Brooks after uh, rookie training camp. He made the guys skate until, uh, you know, till they were puking or something like that. Right. You know, I mean, that's something, you know, but uh, to come out and say that he <laughs> did this, I just don't. <laughs> and to say, I hope we're telling the truth. That kind to me kind of, I don't know, that yeah, kind I mean, of. That's he was trying to good... cover his ass there maybe because. Right. When you, I mean, you can say all kinds of things on your podcast. I can say, as long as I keep saying the word allegedly, I can pretty much say whatever the hell I want in a lot right. of ways. If yeah. I just keep saying allegedly, I think, you know, all right, people might get mad at me, but I don't get sued. But if right. he, he really pushed the envelope, and I'm surprised because out of those guys in that thing, not only is it bar stools, but he, like I said, he's on major, like the NHL, if they feel that, that he did what we're, that possibly he embellished this. I don't think they'd have a hard time telling him you're not coming back to NHL TNT because, you know, I, I mean, let me this way that spitting chicklets podcast and that video caused the Columbus blue jackets, the captain of the team and the biggest star of the team to have to come out and make literally have to put out statements. So, right. um, if I was them, I would feel very, Look, if they don't like Bab, I don't like, I don't know Babcock. But what happened in Toronto, obviously, I wasn't crazy about. I kind of thought that was was a shitty thing to do. Um, right. We know that in Detroit, we were just talking about this before the show. What uh, Franson and uh, Franzen and um, Lidstrom weren't big Lidstrom. fans at all. Yeah, no. We know Mike Commodore didn't like him. Yeah. And if I could remember when the Leafs See, Commodore's the on that show, you know, he's on, you know, when the Red Wings and Leafs played. In the outdoor game, I believe the head coach was Babcock, or was it Carlisle? No, uh, it was geez. Babcock. It was it Babcock. Wasn't Randy, it wasn't Randy Carlisle. No, it was, it it was, was Babcock. Babcock. And yep. there was someone, and I'm <clears throat> that was an ex, was from Michigan. It might have been Ron Hainsey. I'm not sure, but he didn't play him in that game. Mm -hmm. And Everyone was pissed off. Like, what? Why wouldn't you play? Please, from I admit it wasn't someone on that team, or maybe it was even Justin Hall. I don't know, but there was someone on that team that was a Michigan native, and it would have been a big deal too. And he benched them. They didn't play. I might even be thinking of a forward, but I remember it was a big deal. Everyone's like, "Why would you do that to him? What's the right. point?" And um, so there's been those things. I would imagine, though, Bill. I really, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say that there's no way. Unless he's the biggest actor that he could be back in this league again. Because Johnny Goudreau, these guys, he's gonna have what he has Fantilli with him now, right? I mm -hmm. think. Good lord, why would you want him if that was the case? If he was still a maniac, you know, he was still like that. Yeah. You're asking for trouble. But right. I'm kind of disappointed in Bizonette because I like him. I enjoy the podcast. I think it's fun. I think it's fun. I know it's a slow look at us. We know it's slow times. 
Mm-hmm. There's not much news, right? So well, yeah, and that's but that's all the more reason to not, you know what I mean? I mean that just kind of you, you have to when you're ever you're this day and age especially. If this was 12, 13 years ago, um, I don't know, would it be as much of a story? Fifteen years ago, I mean, I, you know, you wouldn't be airplane, I guess, photos, but uh, you know, it's just uh, this day and age. You know, there's just, uh, like, I look, just, man, if, Bill, if I went to work and my boss said to me, let me see before, let me, a new boss comes and, you know, and he says to me, I want to see your phone so I can see what kind of guy you are, see what kind of man you are. I, I wouldn't <laughs> show him, I would tell him to go, yeah, obviously yeah. that wouldn't happen. I mean, that's, right. that's insane. That's well, just not even, yeah. And I th- I think that, yeah, I, I think if, you know, if this ends up being a false story, I think Bissonette's going to be, he's going to really, that, that could really hurt him big time. And I, I think, you know, TNT might Mm -hmm. (laughs) cut ties with him because then what, you know, definitely what else is he going to do? You know, if he's, if he's taking stories and, and uh, that, you know, aren't fully credible and aren't vetted, and he's running with them. And I, like I said, I know it's a slow time, but it's, you know, there's yeah. other, you can't do, you can't have a, uh, a story yeah. that you think might be true, but you're not sure and, and run with that. And, and, you know, yeah, potentially. And especially one that's like that. I mean, that's really yeah. like one of those salacious type stories. Right. When the, when your boss comes to you and says, give me your phone. I want to see what you pictures you got to see what kind of a person you are right. beyond like, you know, if I'm going to say, if he were to hear, you know what? I don't think ba- Babcock's benching whomever because of whatever. I mean, that's different. You know yeah. what I mean? That's like this is like off ice weird shit that you could only yeah. say about certain coaches too. Like you couldn't right. say it about John Cooper, right. but you could definitely say it about Babcock. You could probably Tortorella. even say, yeah, Tortorella. Yeah. If yeah. Sutter was still rolling around, yeah, oh you know, yeah, you would like the he'd make a couple it. weird faces and then he'd he'd ask yeah. you for you know. But think about that. If they come to you and ask you for your phone and these guys, here's the different story too. Is I, Maybe I'm making like 20 bucks an hour. So I might have no choice, but to give you my phone, these guys are making more money than him. They're millionaires. You tell them to shove the phone. I'm yeah. not giving you my phone. They well, start laughing at him. And I think it was just maybe a, uh, you know, something that, like you said, like that was joking around and uh, you know, something like that could get twisted, you know, and by the time it made it to spit and chiclets, it was all kinds of screwed up. It it, well, it 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 started as an innocent thing, and on all of a sudden now, you know, it, it was told by fifteen different people, and now spit and chiclets has a completely, uh, you know, completely different version of what happened. And uh, Boone Jenner said, I I read his quote that they were looking at family photos together. Yeah, they were looking at, and and it seemed innocent. Right. To me. And that's um, probably all it was. <laughs> but here's the funny thing about being on a podcast like theirs. And the only one I can equate it to is the little p- political one I do up here. If you're going to make those kind of accusations, here's here's my here's my own little rule. Whether I better know what's true, first of all, and I better believe my my um my source. And I need that source to tell me that if it the shit hits the fan, they're willing to come out and say it. Right. Type of thing. They need to come out and come and have my back, or I'm not saying. Type well, of yeah. Thing. And if you, you have know? any doubts that it's not credible, you can't you can't run with it. You have to shut it down, and you cannot run with it. If you know if 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 the person that's telling you can back it up and can can and it's 100 and you vetted it and it seems you know then that's one thing and they're willing to stand behind it. Then that's one thing. But whenever it's, you know, half assed and uh, oh. you, you have any doubts about it, you can't run with it. I've uh, seen it so many times. Can't. People want to get it out there. They would love yeah. for you to say it. They just don't want to say it. Yeah. And uh, God, I got it. look, man, I know I can say those guys, maybe just, well, don't like I said, it. but someone better teach them. Well, <laughs> he's, yeah, yeah. Babcock's under fire as it is, and this is kind of like he's kind of vulnerable right now, you know. And and this is kind of maybe somebody kind of wanting to take a shot at him, and uh, and uh, you know, kind of you know, make things harder for him. And I don't think anything's going to come of it. Obviously, you have, uh, like I said, yet Jenner, uh, 
in uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, He's going to have to apologize, I bet. Bizonet's yeah. going to have to apologize. Yeah. You had Jenner and, uh, you know, denying everything, basically. So, you know, and, and just saying, you know, so I don't know. I, I think it's. Uh, I got attacked on Twitter today. All I did was say on there, my God, but, you know, Babcock is never, it never ends or something. I, this, yeah. oh my God, the, the people come out of the woodwork. And now, who am I? I got like a thousand <laughs> followers. These people, they were like, you know, very yeah. angry. And these yeah. are Columbus Blue Jackets fans. We even know they had right. them. Right. And they, they they come out of the woodwork to say stuff. I had to. I said the one you'll see it. I tell them, relax, calm down. Yeah. You know. Well, but no. So yeah. I can only imagine what Bizonette would get, right? I mean, yeah. He, oof. Yeah, I'm not good. If it's just, if this is, you know, it looks to me. Like this is a false story, and, and this could be this could not be good for Bissonette, uh, um, you know. But uh, that's uh, yeah. you know, unfortunately, you you've got to have better, uh, you know, you got to have a better judgment than that um, if it is in fact false. You gotta, and I know they they run a show that's like a big, you know, they have a good. I, it's funny. I've watched yeah. it. It oh, makes yeah. me laugh. And even when they were telling that story, I started laughing when I saw yeah. it. I was it just I was cracking up at right. the way that Jeanette was talking and Whitney. And, you know, but then you when I thought about it, I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to if anyone takes this seriously, which obviously they did, we're going to have right. a, you know, a, a, and I just I guess what I just don't understand. You've you got to know better. I mean, not you can't always be Howard Stern. It just doesn't work. I mean, no. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. you can't be shocking when there's nothing well, to shock. Right. And hey, yeah. you know, a month from now, we're going to have some some stories, you know, uh, probably even within a couple of weeks with everything that uh, with that's, you know, you're going to have some stories that are going to come out in camp. We know that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, kind of I don't know. Like I said, it's it's it's, it's a, it is a dull time for us. And that's uh you and I, like, we, we, we're messaging back and forth prior to the show, like, okay, what do we want to talk? What do we want to talk? Do we want to throw this in? You know, because it is it is kind of... Uh, well, uh, Bill, when I saw the Bizonette thing, before yeah. I got to see all the denials, I'm like, oh, my God, this is this is, this is is golden for our podcast to talk about. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. Right. But once the denials came ringing, it came running in i'm like oh my god this, this here now this might is be nothing yeah yeah and it's and what yeah. the story ends up being is how bad they they have you know how bad that business and the guys i got i'm gonna tell you this if they don't apologize i'll be stunned like if there isn't mm -hmm. a real straight out like i'm sorry because it it's uh, boone jenner's not gonna want to go on that show anymore right. i mean and, yeah. I, and what I'm saying, like, because they well, like to get, get a lot jacked. of guys might not want to go on that show anymore now, you know, mm -hmm. because they might, you know, I'd be scared because they, they yeah. just they may. Have, I just can't believe. Look, at, I wouldn't sit here and make up anything. And I and we don't even have a one millionth of the viewers those people have. And I wouldn't make up a shit here, right. you know. Yeah, I, I can't understand these. It's. It is just, it's all on being shocking though. Bar stools is the yeah. way it is, you know, but yeah. still, yeah, you don't want to get into it's that. Just like they have Frank the Tank that always uh, oh, that goes guy. on his tirades. I'm like Frank, calm, I'm actually Facebook friends with him, but I'm like, are you? <laughs> time, like, like, calm down, Frank. Like, it, you know, take it easy, buddy. Like, you're going to be okay. Like, the Mets are going to, you know, the Mets suck, you know. Yeah, season's about over. You know, your your Dolphins. You know, we'll see what happens here. He's a Devils fan, right? He is a Devils fan too. Yeah, yeah. He but, he uh, pissed me off a couple of times. I watched him talking about something. And he brought the Leafs up, and I'm like, you know what, man? Just please <laughs> don't even. Yeah. Are you kidding me? But anyway, yeah. um, what a character. Yeah. No, one last thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah. So you know, I, I mentioned about this. Steve Mears and Bob Erie are out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they FSG uh, took took over the Penguins uh, uh, broadcast and bought AT&T Sportsnet. Uh, they're now changing it to, I think it's Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh Sportsnet is what they're going to call it, um, I believe. Um, I'm just I, I'm trying to look that up. I forget what it's going to be. Sportsnet Pittsburgh is what it's going to be. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm very curious. We haven't heard anything 
come out yet. I'm very curious to hear what their replace who their replacement are going to be. Um, I don't believe it's going to be Phil Bork, the old two niner, or um, Josh Getzoff that do the radio side. I don't I don't see them moving to TV. Um, I know John, you and I talked about Colby Armstrong and Mike Rupp. I know they they you know both of them do a lot um, with the Penguins pregame and postgame. Um, but they're saying about that uh, that that they're national because both of those guys are on national. Um, I, I think they do. They both do stuff with NHL.com, but I also think they do some stuff with TSN T- 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 as well. Yeah. Um, so they're saying that that would probably more than likely those those guys would be out for TV because uh, they'd have too many scheduling conflicts. So I'm just really wondering who the hell they're going to have replace. Uh, Erie and Mears. You know, I was a little bit Steve Mears. I mean, he's been he's been there for the last uh, five or six years. But you know, Erie he he put out a a, a uh, he put out a thing. He said, you know, it's a heavy heart that I share with you. I received an unexpected call yesterday informing me I would not be returning as a Pittsburgh Penguin TV analyst this coming season. My journey began in '83 as a wide-eyed te- teenager with no idea what to expect on the ice or of the city of Pittsburgh. It took time, but with determined players, fans, we brought the cup to Pittsburgh. After my playing days, the luck would have it, I took the radio position. My family dug our roots in the community and the youth hockey. We loved the Berg and me and my job. I was fortunate to work with Par Steigerwald, a legend, who lives and breathes hockey every day um, with the Avravo Crosby, moved to the TV booth with, with Hall of Fame, Michael, Hall of Famer Mike Lang. I remember those two. It was great. Uh, Probably as nervous as, as you guys were, both to work with Mike and to watch Sid do his thing. Wow, very fortunate. Last six years with Mirzi have been equally re- rewarding a pro and a tremendous talent. I would be rem- re- I would re- remiss if I didn't mention our friend Dan Potash. I have nothing but the ass- utmost respect for the love of my former colleagues, friends that I've worked for for the past 22 years. Um, love my nights in Pittsburgh and in the booth. I would cherish many incredible moments this Seat has given me brought special joy and excitement. Uh, not sure where my travels will take me next, but I look forward to the next chapter and will be put much time, energy, and effort into it as I have here. And if you see me in this great city, make sure to stop by and say hello. Thanks again. It's been a pleasure, Bob Beery. Uh, I, I'm really upset about that. I, I, I don't understand why, um, why they chose to remove him. I, I, I mean, I guess they. I don't know. They, they, they're feeling, I mean, I guess their feeling is they want fresh, uh, you know, but you know, Pittsburgh is one of those things where we like the, we like the old staple guys who have been staples in an organization. You know, you look at a guy like Erie who came in in 83, a year before Lemieux, uh, got to Pittsburgh, been through the bad times, been through the good times, you know, um, you know, uh, after Pittsburgh went to, you know, he, he was in Buffalo for a while, San Jose, uh, Detroit. I might be missing an, another team, but, um, but you know, comes back 22 years in that booth, working with Mike Lang, working with Paul, Paul Steigerwald, uh, Steve Mears. And now, you know, he's basically uh, been replaced by who knows who. And uh, my question is, who's next? Are you going to, you know, the old two niner? Same type, you know, he's, he's won the uh, back-to-back cups in 91, 92, uh, you know, joined the Penguins, I believe in 87 was a, uh, I remember he was a Baltimore skipjack for the longest time. That used to be the, uh, the old, uh, the old minor league uh, team of the Penguins, Baltimore skipjacks. Uh, but I, I just don't understand, you know, FSG is just uh they're really starting to piss me off with the, some of yeah. the things, you know, you basically, you basically alienate Lemieux to the point where uh, he doesn't even want to show up to the, uh, to the games anymore. He wasn't even in the building last year at all. I think actually wow. I take that back. He was in one, one game. Uh, Cause I actually have a buddy that, that works down there as an usher and said, yeah, no, he, 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 he has not been in the building. So they, they pissed him off. Um, you know, he still has a share in the team. Uh, but uh I don't know. This FSG, I think they're out of touch. They come from uh, obviously from the Boston area, but I think they're, um, 
I think they're a little bit out of touch with what the Pittsburgh fans want and expect. And I, I just don't understand why they would let Aerie go. Steve Mears, I mean, he hasn't been that uh, long on the job. I could see letting him go, but I didn't under, I don't understand uh, why they let Aerie go. And I'm going to tell you right now, if they don't replace him with somebody that uh, that, that has a history, think. yeah, it's it's you're going to have a lot of pissed off Penguins fans. I'm just 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 saying that I've been a, been a Penguins. Think. I can't even think, man, who they could bring in. That's yeah. the thing. Like I, I what I would love to ask is why. I mean, I know this question is probably dumb, but why? What is the what is the purpose? Like, what was the what was the 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 big need to make that change? Yeah, I mean, it's insane. I mean, I understand a play by play guy. You could probably find another one. Right. It's the problem is Bob Airy. I mean, you. Yeah. It's like with the Islanders when I put them on, they have Butch Goring on. I mean, right. that's that's good. You know, you're going to hear Butch Goring. I mean, right. when you when you put the Islanders on, I mean, when it when I there's certain teams I know him, I don't like him, but I know I'm going to hear Jack Edwards and right. what's his face with the Bruins, Brickley or whatever his name is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? There's certain things like I remember Pang, Darren Pang. When I watched the right. Blues, I knew Pang was going to be there. So right. Mickey Redman with the with the um, the Red Wings, right? Uh, and Bob Airy with the yeah. the Penguins. It it makes no sense. It's the, it absolutely aggravates me because that's kind of our end of it. Like if we were ever going to be involved in a team, that's probably where we would be, right. maybe in the broadcast side of it. And um, what could what could Bob Airy have done? That they said, you know what? It's time after the, it's time we we let them go. Yeah, it's, it's I don't foolish. know. Foolish. I I don't know. I, I don't I don't understand it. Yeah, like Rob um, Ray, Rob Ray here in Buffalo. He's been doing it forever. Right. So you know he's not that great, but you're used to hearing his name. You're used to hearing him. So there he is. Right. Yeah. yeah this pisses, pisses me off too. Yeah, I don't understand. I I really don't understand why they did it. I mean, um, you know. I don't, I, I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't racking, know. I was racking my brain, Bill, trying to think of old penguins. Like, am I missing someone that would be, that is somewhere else doing, like, are they going to pull just someone out of nowhere? You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. Who? I, yeah, I don't know. It's, that's a very good question. I, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, I don't know. Very, uh, very just, you know, <laughs> weird. Stupid. Yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. I don't yeah. understand why uh, they did what they did, but uh, but they did what they did. I, I don't I don't understand it. But uh, I don't but either. Yeah. But I'm dying to find out who it's going to be. Yeah. Who's who's coming in to do that color analyst? Because if it can't be Rupp, it can't be Armstrong. I can't think of any former Penguins right now that, unless there's someone. I mean, I can't. I can't even right. think of anybody that I would say, okay, I could see. I mean, Randy Carlisle was a former Penguin, but we're going back to the 70s, for God's right. sake. Right, yeah. Um, that's that's right. a little bit of a straight, you know, that's a way back. Right. I mean, if you brought him in, he'd be good. Don't get me wrong. He'd be a hell of an analyst. But, right. um, you know, is there an ex-coach? I can't even. I, I, that's what um, I was trying to think. Is there an ex-coach somewhere? That would be jumping in here, but no, I, yeah. gosh, I, I, I it makes yeah. me upset for the fans because I love, listen, as my whole life with the Leafs and any other sport, I grew up a lot of radio. So right. I used to, the announcers were very important to me and they kind of mm -hmm. still are. It's something, and I know it's becoming kids don't give a damn and, and the younger generation don't really care, but right. like if they're even watching, but I know, you know what I mean? I mean, the announcers are a big deal. Um, hey, I grew up listening to Mike Lang. I mean, I grew up listening to Mike Lang. That was when I was, uh, I'm, I'm 43 years old, and I can remember being seven years old, um, you know, being yep. tucked into my, uh, on a cold winter's night and having that radio that, uh, that remember those old clock radios that lit up, yep. you know, the, the dials lit up. I can remember listening to Mike Lang. I would, my mom would say, yeah, you could lay down and, you know, go to sleep when the game's over and I would listen to the penguin game, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, grew up listening to, uh, to Mike Lang. And then, you know, obviously when, uh, when cable come along, KBL had the, had the games in Pittsburgh and we, uh, we got cable and we we're able to watch the penguin games. But, you know, before that, I, that's how I listened to, uh, that's how I followed the penguins was by radio dial. 
and uh, you know, um, and, and it was and it was great. And you loved yeah. the names, and you liked the people, the people, the the voices, and yeah. I still feel that way. And I know it's because I'm, you know, I'm Yuri. I'm 52, yeah. and um, so it's the same thing. We're the same age group, and I just those yeah. were important things. And I think they're missing out. Like even on all of it, the people that are watching are us. Right. I mean, I got a son who's in his who's 20. He he doesn't he likes sports, but it's not the same. Right. He's not watching it like I did at 20. <laughs> well. Totally different. Yeah, you you back in the day you had to be immersed in it because you didn't have uh you couldn't look up things on your fingertips. You know, you couldn't yeah. you couldn't look where it's a condensed game, you know, a, a, yeah. on your phone, you know, anywhere. Anywhere. You could be in the middle of the woods. Oh, let me look what let me watch this 20 minute uh condensed game. Let me see what happened. Let me see the highlights. You know, you didn't have that back in the day. Yeah. You had to immerse yourself uh in the team, in the radio, in 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 the TV when you could watch it, you know. And uh, that's how you had to follow the games, you know. Here here in Buffalo, I mean, I'm not a Sabres fan, but Rick Jenneret just passed away. That guy was a a legend here, you know, as far as screaming May Day when Rob May, (laughs) when he scored and Brad May and all that stuff. And and, uh, so, you know, those are the voices you'll hear in your head, man, for as long as you can remember. I'm trying to think with the Leafs. It was mostly Joe Bowen, I think, on the radio, but on TV. I mean, it was. uh, Uh, Joe Bowen. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, Cam- hello, I'm Joe Bowen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Holy Mackinac and all that yeah. stuff. And then you'd have the guys yeah. on TV. The TV guys were just as important because yeah. as we got cable too. I mean, here comes for me. It was like Danny Gallivan and uh, and you would hear um, Bill Hewitt. These guys yeah. were old school. I mean, they were they were yeah. good though. Um, yeah. And now I just, just I remember nothing. I remember Joe Bowen had that that video. It come out, I, I want to say in the late 80s, but it was uh, Hockey's Hardest Hitters. <laughs> and he would say, he's a, there was a gracefulness on ice of a, of a ballet dancer with the added element of body contact. <laughs> <laughs> he's still there. They fired him. I thought he was, you know, it's funny you bring this, uh, he comes up. It was just earlier, he bid his farewell. He had said that he got, but they ended up reconsidering. Yeah, and he's... and they kept him and and uh and ralph the his yeah. side jim ralph who was a goalie for the leafs years ago not a good one but he was a goalie but they've been together forever and i'm glad they reconsidered because i don't know what yeah. you're gonna do you, you, i mean because if you're still listening to hockey games on the radio you're old and yeah. and, and you're a mirror us and you well, know so I, I you know i it's funny because I, I'm actually one of these guys, you know, being up here in Wisconsin, I have to rely on uh, ESPN uh, plus to watch the games, yeah. uh, watch the Penguin games. And I, and I pretty much, when this, when it was on AT&T Sportsnet, I was able to watch every single game. Uh, but when they would be on TNT, unfortunately I have Fubo and they don't carry TNT. So uh, I would switch to the radio and I would listen to Josh gets off and uh, the old two niner Phil Bork. And honestly, I enjoy. I enjoy. I enjoy the, the way that those guys announce a game, especially Borky. The way that he, the color that he adds to the game, it's 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 uh, it's way. I I actually find myself. I actually, and this is crazy, John, but I can actually when like when I do, when we do our Pittsburgh sports desk, you know, you know, in the winter and the height of the season, we talk a lot of Penguin hockey. And actually, when I listen to to Borky on the radio, I I can like. I can I have better recollection of the game uh, than if I would have watched it to uh, to be honest with you like literally I mean he like the highs and the low and the high points of the game he just really he he puts so much color into it you don't forget what happened you know and um you know those, those guys are really those play by play and color analysts on, on the to me on the radio are they're incredible storytellers because we've had, I've done it with baseball. Of course, I've done it with football and it's for me, I, I, I know it's going to sound crazy, but there's times where I could, I easily can prefer the radio. If yeah. it wouldn't bother me in the least, let's put it that way. Sure. Right. I'm spoiled. I watch every leaf game. I watch every bears game. I watch everything I want to watch, but right. it, it wouldn't bother me if you, if it, if they, if I had to do it, I, I'd be fine. Well, for sure. and if you're, if you're a hockey guy, and, or gal, if you're, if you're, you know, if, if you know the game, uh, if you don't know the game and you're new to the game, 
listening on the radio might be an issue. But if you're somebody like me and you, you know, Jim and other people that, you know, are immersed in hockey and have been hockey fans for decades, um, you can listen to the radio and it suffices. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, you know, you can, you can listen to a game and know exactly what's going on. Uh, you can anticipate things you can, you know, and you, uh, it's, you know, like I said, sometimes there's times when I see that it's going to be on TNT, I'm like, Oh, great. Good. I get to, I get to listen to, to Borky and, uh, and gets off, you know? So I wish I, sometimes I try to sync the TV, but I can never do it right. No, I can never do it either. Yeah. I can never do it. It's always on a delay on either the radio side or the TV side. You can, you can even pause it. You can pause it and try yeah. to get it <laughs> to work. where it is that you never can get it to, to where, you know, you're always a little bit off. You're always a little bit yeah. off. I've, I've gotten it to the point where, you know, like the, uh, the ref will announce, you know, Pittsburgh is challenging the goal, you know, and it'll be like, yeah. uh, you know, oh, it'll be like, you know, six seconds off, you know, so, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, so, well, well, John, I think we, yeah. uh, we went, went to an hour here. Well, that's pretty good being in the good off season, us. still going in the hours, huh? But, uh, yeah, yeah uh, hey, we it's coming. We're, we're right at it. We're right at the tip of the, uh, iceberg there, folks. So we're, uh, can't wait, can't wait till hockey starts and, and we can just really get into this regular season and, and talking about even in the preseason we'll have some things to talk about for sure but uh and uh some things will transpire we know in camps and uh you know it'll be good so but uh so all right well thanks all right. everybody for tuning in and uh thanks for the comments tonight and uh we'll be back uh same time next week so take care everybody yeah.